River State House of Assembly Complex. Demolished as Governor Fubara presents 2024 budget to five rivers lawmakers. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. The River State Government on Wednesday morning demolished the State House of Assembly, the State House of Assembly complex, explaining why it demolished the complex while speaking to newsmen. The Commissioner for Information of the State, Joseph Johnson, said the government took the decision because of the structural defects in the building after the fire incident that occurred in October this year. Meanwhile, the River State Governor, Simile Naya Fubara, on the same day, presented the 2024 appropriation bill to five members of the State House of Assembly loyal to him. This came a few minutes after the demolition of the State House of Assembly complex. The 27 members of the House Loyal to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yeson Wiki, who recently defected from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress, were not present at the sitting. Take a listen. We recall that um, on the 30th of October, after the fire incident that took place on the 29th, arising from the visit of His Excellency, I was on that trip. And we got there to assess the extent of damage. But beyond that, His Excellency also commissioned uh, consultants who went into the structure and came up with uh, an advice that uh, it was no longer habitable and not very conducive for business. On the strength of that advice, the government had decided to demolish that structure and also provide a befitting place for members of parliament to transact their business. Well, the rapidity at which uh, we commence today will tell you that uh, we're prepared to do it. I mean, within record time, I'm sure that place will be fit for uh, legislative business. Joining us now is the publisher of Christina Reports, Gospel Jumbo, and former APC spokesperson, Dalintin Wauju, also joining us in the Publicity Secretary, APC River State, Chibike Kenga. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to Pulse Politics. Hello. Consultants who went into. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Bola. Good evening. And welcome, Dalintin and the other. Dalintin. Darlington, the drama or the tragic comedy that is happening in rivers is so, so disturbing now. So what would you tell our viewers about what is happening in, in rivers? Thank you very much, uh, viewers. Unfortunately, um, my state, again, is experiencing another round of uh, crisis. But this time, we are aware that all these actions of the government is, as, is a response to the pains of the defection of the 27 members of the House of Assembly who joined APC in the, in the last 48 hours. You are aware that they have had intractable problems in PDP, which culminated in the defection of 27 House of Assembly members to our party, APC. The government, led by Governor Sim Fubara, being very pained and irked by that development, went for their pound of flesh by the demolition of one of the relics of the state, the River State House Assembly Complex. Unfortunately, 
That complex had been in existence and is one of our relics, and there was no need for that demolition, taking into consideration that such huge funds, humongous funds, that will be expended in the destruction and reconstruction of this edifice could have been channeled to other sectors yearning for investments. And these investments, these funds would have been plowed into those areas that will help create the enabling environment that will create jobs, that will improve on the education sector, improve on the agriculture sector, and then look at some of the major challenges we have had in the state on that development and poverty, ravaging poverty. So that for the funds that will be now expended in demolition and rebuilding of this edifice could have been channeled to those areas for the greater good of the reverse people. So as a party, we are unhappy with it. That's why we are opposed to it. But the impunity is by the day getting more expanded. And that as a party, we condemn it in all its entirety. It is just natural that as an APC uh, stalwart, you would condemn it. And, you know, to any, any uh, sensible Nigerian, this is condemnable. But having said that, uh, if the tables were to be turned, you probably, people in your party too, probably wouldn't have done any better. How would you respond to that? Well, I do not think so, because... APC as a party in River State, in the build-up to the 2023 elections, did prepare very well to usher in people-oriented government. Government that will be saddled with the responsibility of ensuring the economic and social survival of its citizens. But unfortunately, we do know that PDP is known for this type of crisis where they try to continuously recycle problems within the state and enhance on that development. As a party, should APC take over the reins of governance in River State, APC will usher in the best government and the government that the people have yearned for over the years. Would you not think that your remark now uh, comes with a tinge of irony? It was the PDP uh, characters in Rivers that helped you people win the presidential poll in, in Rivers. It was the, the executive of the APC that, if you want to claim the credit for APC, the executive uh, council of the APC that did it for the APC was suddenly defenestrated a couple of days ago for a caretaker uh, executive to come into place, I guess with a view that your national secretary announced that uh, the 27 members will be, will be jettisoning their party. So uh, what would be your response to that? Well, I, I will um, speak the truth and nothing but the truth. I, I will recall that in the build-up to the 2023 elections, uh, one of the heavyweights in PDP, Chief Nyeson Wike, the governor, as he then was, and today the minister of the FCT, mobilize his supporters to give a support to give the proper support to the president Ahmed Bolatinibu in the election which helped with the support of we the leaders of APC in River State a couple of us who supported with the Chivier so we can we deliver the president that is correct but that's not to say that the entire PDP in River State are people who are progressively minded a couple of them have resorted to their old ways of trying to create more crises and retard development. So the national leadership of our party, I'm aware, did not at any point in time contemplate that 27 House of Assembly members were defecting, and that was the reason for instituting a caretaker committee. Rather, what was the issue was that APC uh, leadership at the state, particularly the uh, party executive, have had intractable challenges, disagreements, that had gone beyond their control, wherein the party now had two leadership structures at the party, one led by one Emeka BK, and then another one led by Omete Ferebo, both of them commanding some troops, 
in the executive, which was now split into two, and had created problems and made it impossible for the party to progress. It was on the basis of that that the National Executive Committee, we ceded this power to the National Working Committee on the second, from the second to the third of uh, um, uh, August, to to have to manage the party. And then they saw that there was reason after factions of the parties led their delegations to meet the national chairman. It was, it was in that uh, situation that the, party, the National Executive Party found out that there was an absolute need for them to reject the party, which led to the institution of the caretaker committee that we have today. And uh, the timing was such that uh, it was a couple of days to, just to the defection of the, of the 27 members and it was just a couple of days too to the very, very interesting sing song of the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory on, on your mandate. We shall. Don't you think the coincidences are a bit of. And uh, it is even alleged now by APC traditionalists in, in Rivers that the, the interim. Uh, executive co a committee is actually made up of loyalists to, to former Governor Wiki. How would you want to respond to all those? Well, um, some of them speak from both sides of their mouth. I am a foundation member of APC. I was there from day one, and I was the leader of APC in Equerry Local Government, where the former Minister of Transportation hails from. I was its leader until such a time I left. I can tell you that there's no one in APC who can say that he's more a traditionalist to APC than myself. Let me say, for purposes of respect to the honorable uh, minister, former Minister of Transportation, apart from him at his own level, I do not think that there's any other person who can assume that he played more roles, better roles than myself, and a few others in the party. Reason being that we fought for this party, we have stood for this party, and we are disenchanted with the divisions that have trade this party over the years. And there is need for us all to today look for a possible way to reject the party. But I can tell you that in the most recent, our governorship candidate, Toye Ko, whom I support so strongly till tomorrow, I believe that Toye Ko is better prepared was better prepared and is still better prepared to do the job of governance in River State. Unfortunately, politics has its own way. So I can tell you that I was part of the delegation that Toye Cole, as the governorship candidate and leader, took to the national chairman and national working committee of the party to ask the national chairman and the party to intervene to reject the party. And that as a member of this caretaker committee, my membership was drawn from the fact that I was part of Tony Eko's uh, delegation to the place. Chief Tony Okocha also had his own faction. And then uh, Magnus Sabe and a few others also led a group of SDP members, even though they were former members of APC who went to SDP, they also went to the National Chairman and National Working Committee to ask that everybody be brought together so we can have a new start. And that's where we are today. So uh, that is the politics of APC which is not so much the issue in contention now. The issue in contention now is that the appropriation bill for 2024 in your state has been officially presented to a group of parliamentarians that is officially less than a quorum of the State House of Assembly. I guess they are working on the injunction they got yesterday that the Edison AES faction is the recognized faction of the legislature. Uh, what would be your response to that seeming aberration? Yeah, that is what we woke up uh, to see this morning. It is all choreographed. Like yesterday, we, uh, APC as a party in the state did grant a press conference wherein we alerted reverse people Show the that name, the name, judge name. by S-Party, which uh, Dana, Justice Danagogo 
granted was purposely done to prepare the way for the Edison NHLN as for assembly to receive the budget from the governor today. I know that a four or five member as of assembly, a four or five member assembly is an aberration. It's an aberration to democracy where we have 32 members minus one deceased. If assuming without proceeding that they wanted a few members to be there, they have their laws, they have uh, they have their harsh rules which guides their okay. Okay, let, let, I'll come back to you. Let me talk to Dalintin Waju now. Dalintin Waju, are you there? Yes, please. Uh, what is your take on uh, this melodrama happening in your state? Sad but funny. Unfortunately, uh, this is not what we desire. But I think that the government of PDP in River State is orchestrating all these challenges to have an easy way out, to, uh, to avert uh, checks and balances, because now that we have the majority of House Assembly, it is our responsibility to check the arbitrariness like what we have seen today. Today, they have uh, exposed themselves because this government and this party, PDP, are interested in ensuring that they do not follow due processes. And without due processes, these are anti-democratic uh, actions that retard development. And it's an unfortunate development. And we ask that all well-meaning Nigerians should, and those who believe in democracy, transparency, and accountability, should speak up. So let, let, let me quickly let me let me quickly get to one of our participants, Goxville, Goxville Jumbo. Uh, Goxville Jumbo, are you there? Yes, good evening. My pleasure being with you here. Good, e good evening, Goswe Jumbo. Uh, what is happening in your state? What is happening in a state that is ordinarily one of the iconic states of the Federation and where for, even if one were to look into the history of Nigeria, for centuries, uh, you guys have been interacting with modernity and westernization. What is happening that has gotten to the level of this vandalism and share? Go ahead, please. Uh, well, uh, not, not much. Not much. Like uh, my friend and brother, Chibike Kinga, you know, he was with us in government house, and he worked with Nyesa Wike then, directly. So he knows uh, he can relate to the things I'll be saying this uh, evening here. Uh, from the points where it was clear that uh, our our elder brother, Nyesa Wike, who is now the FCT minister, from the point it was clear that he was going to become the governor. We expected a day like this to come. His style of politics, his brand of politics, his model operandi, his SOP, you know, it is what is playing out. You know, the people, the, the key actors in the drama that is playing out in River State are people who underwent his tutelage, who were groomed by him. You know, so we don't expect uh, anything uh, different from what we are seeing. The, the, the only part, you know, and, and for, for us as uh, spectators who are watching the whole drama from the sideline, you know, we, we, we think the complaints from the APC are hardly hold water. The APC in River State is uh, supporting the PDP. The APC in River State is also criticizing the PDP. So which one are we taking? On which side are they? You know, they, they, they have appointed the former governor as a minister in their government. And uh, he's, the former governor is now a minister in their government at the center. He uh, has a son who is, now, who is now the governor of the state. And a lot is happening around him. You know, so 
their criticism or endorsement, it doesn't hold water much, you know. For me, you know, as a media person, a public uh, affairs analyst, when I look at the things that are happening, I think it is the process of extricating River State from the confusion that, you know, the political actors have put it in the past you know, a couple of years, eight years, and thereabouts. And like I said in the program here, some time ago, River State, you know, has is in a state of abeyance, especially the economy of the states, especially the, the way and means of the survival, of the subsistence, of the good of the good life of the people of River State. It has been in suspension. And at the point where the current governor decided to look at what are those what are those indices that if uh, you know stimulated can re, re jump start you know reactivate the economic life of river states that is where the crisis broke out you know and there are all kind of rumors flying out uh, monies that should be paid here and there uh, pay, uh, the decision on whether to pay pensioners or not to pay them whether it's a waste of resources or not and all of that and they react the Songhai farm, the banana farm, the Eche farm, the, the Bori, you know, uh, shoe factory, and several other economic, uh, economic stimulants that were in place. And at that point, you know, the disagreement started. Uh, the issue of the demolition of the House of Assembly that happened today, you know, uh, fine, you know, there are different sides to it. On the one side, it's an edifice that's, you know, one of the one of the landmarks. And then there is also the issue of the integrity uh, status of that uh, facility. The former governor himself said it on record that that building is faulty and needs to be fixed. And then after the explosion and the fire incident that happened uh, October 30th, there was also you know, uh, indications from experts that that building needs to be rejected. So, and then we saw the, the demolition today. Maybe the governor is taking that drastic measure. So, Gosway, 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 Gosway. As a media person, you are looking straight into yes. my eyes and you are telling the world that as a media person, it was probably because of the reports of professionals that, that that structure may have been defective, that they sent caterpillars there today, not because of the defection of the 27 members. Yes, I, it is, it, I, I don't see any connection to defection of anybody. People have always been defecting. In 2015, all of us that were serving in the River State government, all of us were moved to the APC. No building was demolished. And then all along the line, people, even recently, just early this year before the election, a lot of defections happened. Even after the election, defections have been But happened. you know, even today, but you, the, but you, but, so, as, but as a journalist, Goswill, Goswill, as a journalist, Goswill, 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 as a journalist, but you know the facts are different. When you moved in 2015, you moved with a sitting governor. In this instance, the 27 have moved without the sitting governor, and you know who controls the executive powers of your state. So the facts are not similar. You know that. And no, no, not the facts. The circumstances, sir. The facts are different. We are talking about the circumstances. In that case, a governor moved his a, the, the officials, the functionaries in his administration to a new party. In this, in this case, the government is splitting up some people who you know decided to express their constitutional rights of association decided to move from one party to another. So tying it to, you know, a government looking at a public facility, a public structure, and, and, and uh, based on whatever are the findings that the experts they deployed 
to run integrity tests on that facility, uh, advising. Okay. Um, uh, 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 Jumbo. Goswe. Goswe. No, I don't see the connection. Okay, no Goswe. Let me quickly let me quickly ask you this before. Let me quickly ask you this before I go to to uh, another person. Uh, Goswe, I was particularly following the story this morning, and I was shocked to know that nobody bothered. Nobody really bothered to pick out, to take out the furniture, pieces of furniture. Nobody bothered to take out the electronic gadgets, the air conditioning. So apart from the structure that was demolished, billions of naira worth of valuables were also crushed with that building because somebody believes that that building must go down to prove that he is in charge in, in, in River State. I, I think we need to step back from any judgmental uh, posture. The governor has not said that he is bringing down that building because he wants to show that he is in charge. And by the way, is he not in charge? Is he supposed to overemphasize that? Is he even supposed to say it by whether words or actions? You know, I don't think I don't think anybody is showing anything. For for me, as a development enthusiast, when I see uh, that uh, experts have looked at the building and they think, okay, look at all the all the uh, buildings that collapsed in Lagos and several lives that were lost. So would we want that kind of thing again in River State? We need, we need to, I think we need to be objective here. As much as we want to tap into politics, let's look for the facts that, you know, objectively, dispassionately tied together the two issues. And uh, they are not there. Let's not integrate them. Uh, and uh, at least, uh, at least the, the, we should, this fact should not be controvertible. And that fact is the fact that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at the level of the state uh, envisages that there will be three co-equal arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. As we speak now, in River State, the physical infrastructure that, that should serve the, exec the legislature has been crushed. Do we agree on that? I, I, I don't see any interference with the operations, the functions of the legislature. Has the governor at any time gone to disrupt the sitting of the legislature? It has never happened. It, neither of the factions sitting, whether the AHA-led faction or the Matis Amehule led faction, has been disrupted by the executive arm. They sit. I think the when we look at the issue of the, the building that is, I think it's about making sure that they have a building that is safe for them to be able to sit under, that we will not have a situation where 32 lawmakers, a building will collapse and we lost 32 lawmakers. You remember oh. the Sosoliso plane crash? Okay, oh, okay. Gosh, people died. Oh, God, let, me go to, God, let me go to your colleague. Let me go to your colleague. Let so me go to your colleague. I'll be back. I'll be back. I, I, I'll come back okay. to you. I'll come back to you. Uh, Darlington. Hello? Uh, uh, Chibike. Yes, I'm on. Chibike Hello. Kenga. Yes, you please. You must have listened to your colleague on this show, um, a known journalist um, known media person in your in your uh, 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 area, uh, and he believes that uh, the the demolition could have been instructed by the professional recommendation of uh, of experts who who visited post uh, the acts the arson, and uh, probably the proper the this thing was demolished based on their report.
How would you want to re re respond to that? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think that uh, I've listened to the rationalizations of gospel. Gospel is an interested party. He's coming under the cloak of a public uh, uh, analyst. That's not correct. If you watch the, the, his narrative and the trajectory he has taken the analysis, you'll find out that he is pure and simple, a supporter of PDP and the government at the state. So that's why, irrespective of whatever rationalizations or uh, exceptions he has made, for the reasons for demolition, for the reasons for the actions of the governor. He cannot stand. But let me make an let me correct an impression. Mr. Gosford, the last time I worked in government house, the last time I was in government house, I worked in government was in 2011. So for you to come on air to say that uh, we were in government together and I worked with you uh, on that year so weekend. Yes, so weekend was governor for eight years. I did not work with him. I did not step into that government house. That is the truth. But the truth here is that what what all the actions that have, that have taken place in, in River State in the recent days are all governmental conspiracy and all governmental propaganda geared towards taking a complete control of governance in River State. They are not interested in supporting checks and balances. The government wants to run a solo government, a situation where a government will support a five-man committee in the House of Assembly, to, to, to the chagrin of the larger constituents, is most appalling. And you support the fact that the government, which had shut out 27 members and their constituents, and are dealing with only four or about five members, is most uh, challenging. And I do not think that, as APC in River State, we will support that. That is why we are against it. We are not interested in the divisions they have had in their party as PDP, they should continue to have their divisions because that divisions had come through us before and they capitalized on it and then got a uh, government. So now that they have their own division, we're interested in ensuring that we take their members as much as they did last time to us. Go and then we can the government. Okay, uh, let, let me give the gentleman a fair opportunity to respond to the two points you've made. Uh, Goswill, um, uh, Chibike is saying that, you know what? Uh, it was not in the government house in 2015 that it was, the last time he worked there was in 2011. And that uh, he's, uh, he, he believes that you have a vested interest but uh, feigning, feigning the, pretending to be an innocent uh, a public analyst. How would you want to respond to those accusations? Okay, uh, first of all, there is no misrepresentation of facts about our relation, our working relationship. I started working in government house from 2008, and then I was made the chief press secretary to the deputy governor January 2013. So from 2008 to 2011, we worked together. I was in the media department of the deputy governor's office, and he was in the office of the chief of staff. So there's no misrepresentation of fact when I say we work together in government house. Just that I didn't infuse the dates when we work together. He can remember we, we, we are all there in government house. So there is no misrepresentation of facts here. As per his uh, assertion that uh, I am pro-PDP, pro-the government and all of that, I quit politics on the 27th of January 2016. And I've never... I've never involved myself in politics. My name is not on any party register anywhere in the world. I remain apolitical, I remain neutral, I remain objective. And I'm able to give the analysis I'm giving because I'm not connected to the situation. I'm not in the arena. I'm a spectator, I'm by the side. You know, let's not, let's not fabricate situations that do not exist. If you say, if you say the governor is trying to assert his authority, is trying to uh, subsume, emasculate the lawmakers, then bring the facts. The M. Edison, the AHA faction, has been sitting. The Martins, Ameulis faction, has been sitting. And the governor has not interfered with that. Tell me he has interfered. And then I will agree with you. Uh, but uh, but uh, Goswill, uh, to you... Uh, 
Hello, uh, hello, the hello, hello, Goswil, Goswil. The governor now uh, ignore the decision of a competent court of law. Should the governor ignore that? The governor, the, the court has said that this is the, the recognized speaker of the River State House of Assembly. So who else is the governor supposed to present the budget to? So, uh, well, but Goswil, I just want you to respond to this. The, the, hello, the, hello, the, Goswil, the, Goswil. Gosu, yes. uh, to you, the the asking, the the chamber of the House of House of Assembly, uh, going ablaze, whilst the uh, impeachment session was about to happen, was a coincidence. It must have been from your analysis, and the demolition, uh, from your analysis, as earlier proceeded. Uh, is perhaps uh, on the recommendation of the professionals that visited. I, I guess. No, that, that, I, I think I think you be fair to me not to impute words I have not said. I don't know how the fire in the House of Assembly occurred. Just like everybody heard about it, I wasn't even in Port Harcourt. I was in my hometown, Bonny Island, as at the time it happened. So I wasn't anywhere around that facility. So I don't know how it happened. You know, whether it's a coincidence, whether it is not, it's what I don't know. And I have never said I know. So tying me to it, I mean, it doesn't. And incidents happen. And the governor, as the chief security officer of the state, you know, has to come in and, uh, you know, inspect the place. And probably from what the Commission of Information was saying earlier today, uh, you know, assemble experts to make an assessment of the building, which anybody will expect a responsible government to do. And now, that's based on that recommendation, that that building is faulty, and he decides to bring it down to put up a new ed edifice that is structurally, structurally uh, resilient, you know, and safe enough for the lawmakers to sit. What is the bad thing about that? So for me, let's not criticize for the sake of criticism. And by the way, the APC government is the, AP, the, the party or the All Progressive Congress he is, you know, uh, trying to uh, promote here. Let's also understand that this whole thing may even be actually the activities, you know, at the back end of who, 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 who what if, what if is the APC government that is actually, you know, giving the guiding light? To the governor on what to do. We may never know this is politics. This is river state. The, the politicians, they, they are hardly neither here nor there. And I said it on this program the last time you invited me, that river state has always been PDP. When I know my friend and brother, TBK Kenka, he was PDP. He was not APC. I was not even a member of Okay, let's give him let's give him later. let's give him a fair chance to to respond to okay. some of the some of the subtle allegations you've made. Uh, Ikenga, according to, according to God's will, uh, you, you, are, you are like, uh, a, you know, you are not consistent. When he knew you, you were in PDP. Now it suits you, you are, you are talking as though any member of the PDP is, uh, is, should be seen as a political villain. Uh, how would you want to respond to that? Well, um, he should also tell us why he ran away from politics, because it became very hot and he could not uh, participate for that. He could not uh, stand the heat. That's why he ran away. But let me tell you, I was in PDP. All of us were all in PDP, and we moved with Rotibi Amechi to APC. That's why I did say that I'm a foundation member of APC from 2013, and I'm still in APC till date. The point being made here is that the, the government, the government and party, PDP, River State, are not doing, are not involved, are not taking programs that are people oriented. They are chasing. Vendetta. They are after personal egos, petty politics. The government and PDP should today concentrate on delivering the goods and services that rivers people yearn for, and not to go back to the days of campaigns. As campaigns are over, they ought to continue to take on the on good governance 
take the people out of poverty and usher in the uh, best Ch of Chibike, Chibike, let, let me even ask you. Um, your namesake, uh, your, you know, former Governor Chibike Amechi, what's the status in your party now in, in, uh, in River State? Well, former Governor Chibike Amechi and um, former Minister of Transportation is still a member of APC. To the best of my knowledge up to today. So, uh, if you're still a member of the APC, this interim or caretaker committee that you, that uh, the National Secretariat has instituted in uh, in River State, uh, where do where does this uh, where does this die role now in the in the newly constituted uh, caretaker committee? Well, I, I was drafted from um, the former faction, which was loyal to him, because I was part of those who went with Toye Cole, our governorship candidate, to see the national chairman. It was on the basis of that I was selected, like I said the other time. So now we have all become one, no more factions. So I, the level I am now in the party as a publicity secretary, I can no longer discuss factions. I believe that APC is one today in River State, and our interest is to try to win elections and take over the reins of government from PDP in River State. Uh, Goswil, let's wrap up with you. Um, it's not looking good. If you, if you are a bona fide media person and uh, you are genuinely, as you have claimed, if you are genuinely uh, uh, non-partisan, or are political on, on, on these issues, you will agree with me that what is happening now in Rivers does not quite paint a good portraiture of governance in any state, not to talk of Rivers. Do we agree on that? Okay, first of all, before I respond to that, let me clarify. He said uh, uh, that the politics became too hot, and so I had to run away. I didn't run away from politics. I quit politics on divine direction. God spoke to me to quit politics. So I obeyed and quit politics. Nothing else to it. There was nothing hot. It's our state. We are here. There's nothing happening anywhere. We are all here. That is one. So let me clarify that. And secondly, I'm not on trial here. Goswe Jumbo, as a media personality, my reputation is consolidated. So I'm not on trial here. Then coming back to what you're saying, yes, the picture is not good at all. Whether anybody wants to say he's APC or PDP or neutral or whatever, what is happening in River State is not the best. It's not what should happen. We should have a state where uh, after the politics has been played, governance should now be mainstreamed. The economic well-being of the people of the state should now take the center stage, you know, and then the, the various levers, you know, and strings of government should, you know, be able to uh, link up with themselves and harness, you know, whatever, you know, support they can uh, muster, you know, for the governor who is the leader of the park, the team lead uh, for governance in the state to be able to deliver to. Uh, to deliver on the promised deliverables. Uh, okay, the well, that, that, that's where we will leave it. Day. The time is quite. We should come together and support the, gov the government to be able to make life better for uh, the people of the states. Okay, that's my thank position. you. Thank you so very I much. I agree with you that things are not looking well. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you know the sacrifices you've made to. Uh, add value to the program today and enlighten our viewers about what is happening in your state. We wish you all the very best and we pray that uh, Rivers will go in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.